Hey, everybody. I'm Hillary Atkin from the Atkin Report, and I'm very excited to welcome Andy Goddard and Kellen Jones to this edition of Hillary's Happy Hour. How are you doing today? Very good, thank you. Thanks, Hillary. Great, Hillary. Great to see you. Thank you. Well, theaters are starting to open, and your film will be not only on the big screen, but on demand. It's set in England in 1939 on the eve of World War II as Adolf Hitler is solidifying his power across the continent. So please tell us more about Six Minutes to Midnight. Well, uh, it all started with Eddie Izzard. Uh, Eddie Izzard kind of birthed the story into being. It's based on uh, true events. Uh, Eddie grew up in a town called Bexhill on Sea, which is a little seaside town on the southeast coast of England. And he grew up there and he found out in Bexhill Museum, there was this school blazer badge. And on the blazer badge, uh, there was a Union Jack and a swastika. And this is from a school that was in Bexhill on Sea in the 1930s. And of course, Eddie thought, well, how can this be? What was the school? How, how can there be a, a school for Nazi schoolgirls uh, by the English seaside in the run up to World War II? But this is all true. This school existed. Um, the governess at the school was called Miss Rocall, as Judy Dench's character is. And this is a school which would invite um, rich young girls from rich, wealthy backgrounds in Germany to come to England to learn English. And I guess. Uh, the badge was like, that was the hook that kind of, you know, grabbed Eddie. And he's been carrying this idea around for him for a long, long, long time. He was working with Kellen in a film called Castles in the Sky for the BBC. And he told Kellen about this idea that he had. Uh, Kellen then pitched it to the guys at Matters Birds. They all met in Cannes. Or was it the Pinewood Yacht, Kel, in, in, in Cannes? Yeah. And then um, they, they took it from there. And I said, well... We, we just, I just love the idea of creating a film, you know, Eddie Izzard's first sort of um, screenplay, you know, which was kind of exciting idea of exploring that with Eddie, this uh, extraordinary idea of this sort of finishing school for Nazi schoolgirls in England pre, -sec you know, Second World War, which just created a load of mystery as well as the idea of Eddie playing this uh, lead character in this film, like a sort of Robert Donat and 39 Steps-esque character. And uh, very soon after that, Andy and I had done a film together uh, with Elijah Wood called Set Fire to the Stars. And so Andy and I had written a screenplay together before. So we thought, why not write together? It makes no sense not writing together. So we became the sort of three amigos, the three musketeers, and we started writing this script together. We knew Andy was going to direct it. Eddie was going to play the lead. I, I would play a part, play Willis in the end of it. And and we uh, sort of sort of telling this story. How can we do this balance of making a sort of exciting, on your edge, pre-wartime thriller at the same time uh, honoring the sort of hearts and minds and the dra dramatic side of these sort of the, the, the story of the young girls all set within uh, the reality, the history of this real school and obviously the real history and context of the Second World War. So that framing device was sort of uh, inspiring really and thought, well, what a great story. We could tell quite a big story uh, in a quite a lean and taut window. So with loads of characters, Hillary, because we love films with lots of characters. And I think... Uh, you know, uh, you know, we, we we didn't just want one Oscar winner in this movie. We thought we would better have two with Jim Broadbent as well, and uh, why not? But um, it was just a nod to all those sort of classic films of the day where we can have um, uh, sort of peep around the curtain to all these different myriad of characters that can sort of tell a tell a story as deep and as rich as possible. You know, there seems to be a never ending fascination with World War II Nazi stories, but what additional research did you have available? Were any of the women involved? I mean, were you able to talk to them or any of their offspring or any of the, you know, family of the teachers at that school? Well, the closest Eddie got was he, Eddie was able to interview, um, the uh, a woman who worked at the school before she passed away, uh, who told uh, Eddie the story of listening to the radio and listening to Hitler and them all doing the Nazi salute and 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 
Eddie asked the question, did you join in? And she said, well, yes, everybody joined in. And so that was a sort of, that, that was a fact so that Eddie got met and we went to the actual building that was still there, but we never met anybody connected there because uh, they either went around and the, so the, the members of the family who may still be around, um, that we weren't referencing them in the story um, because, uh, you know, we, we, we um, you know, how we wanted to go. So yeah, there was a, there was a wealth of resource from the museum near there. So that was great. Oh, Finn. One of the, you just mentioned one of the most harrowing scenes in the film is when they are chanting Nazi slogans. I'm not even going to say them, but obviously they were in the film, but um, I'm curious about other elements of the production and were you able to use that original building? Did you build sets that were based on the interior? How did that, how did that come into play for you? Um, well, we filmed this in Wales. And so the, the school that we used was a location, was another location in Wales. Uh, we did do some filming in Bexhill and in Eastbourne, uh, which is the sort of uh, the, the patch of England where this really did take place. But everything was filmed in Wales. And I guess the kind of production we were, everything was location based. Um, and within our, our school building, uh, which is an area of Wales called Carmarthenshire, we, we found this beautiful old building which served as, uh, as our school. Um, so it was finding brilliant film friendly locations in Wales that had the, you know, the, the tonality of, of the late 30s. Um, that's, that, 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 that's really kind of what, 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 what we leaned into. Well, the interiors were incredible as well and just kind of gave the viewer the sense of the whole era and the foreboding and, and listening to Hitler on the radio. I mean, it's, it's really a gripping film, but it's such a unique story that I don't think people have heard before. So I'm sure you're very proud of that. And also, we need to talk more about the amazing cast. I know you mentioned Dame Judi Dench. Jim Broadbent, and we can talk about Carla Jury, and of course, Eddie. So tell us more about working with them. Um, everything you think and more. The, 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 the actors I really want to talk about are the German girls. I mean, yes, to all the others, but it's an incredible cast. But uh, our German girls, led by Tijan Marie and Maria Dragas, um, I think they were phenom phenomenal. And, you know, Kellen and I, We've said before that audiences may come to see Judy and they may come to see Eddie, and they certainly won't be disappointed. And I think they'll be surprised by his performance. But I think one of the take homes is these amazing young European actors. Um, so I, I saw 70 German girls on tape, and many of whom were fantastic. And then through a process of elimination, I had my top 20 and I went to Berlin and I cast these fantastic young actresses. Um, and I think they really are. Um, the, the heart and soul of the film um, in terms of performance dynamic, but you, you've also got to remember, this is what a hero is fighting for. He's fighting to save the hearts and minds of these young girls. So among this kind of tapestry in the film and this maelstrom of World War II and all these amazing characters and actors, um, the sort of uh, the, the light in the eye of the hurricane of these girls. So um, yeah, I thought they were great. And then Carla Yuri, she's fantastic. I'd seen her in a film called Wetlands. Um, very uh, organic actress with a fascinating process who just brought layers of complexity to uh, this role of, of Ilsa Keller. And in the writing, we were very keen not to write sort of to the villains in terms of showing why people were seduced by Nazism. Like Kellen was saying in that anecdote just there, you know, when that woman who was really there was asked, did you take part? And she said, yes, we all did. You know, it was... You know, I think it's easy for us to, from the lofty vantage point of history to judge, but th there was maybe a kind of naivety back then. Carla was fantastic. Kellen, James Darcy, you know, uh, Dre and Willis. Um, yeah, it was uh, every day it was this kind of uh, an embarrassment of riches for a director. What do you hope audiences take away from the film? Again, knowing that most people are going to be completely unfamiliar with this story, even people in England. Yeah. I think they'll be unfamiliar with the story as I was to begin with, but I think they will be familiar with having daughters, having a family, um, wanting to preserve, you know, protect their loved ones in, in, in times of strife, um, you know, um, 
Eddie always says, you know, fascism was a human problem, not a German problem. And I think it's just uh, learning from history and just being aware of, and just questioning things. And, you know, we have gone through some very turbulent times recently and we still are. And um, that's, I guess, what I like audiences to take away from the film. Um, so I think that they'll, they'll, they'll tap into that. I think the fact that the, the story that this evolved from is this sort of curious footnote in history, um, that's the jumping off point. But I think the wider story is about, um, you know, it's about this, it's about, you know, it's about saving the hearts and minds of, of the next generation. Mm. Alan, and you, you also participated on screen in the back half of the film. So what are your closing thoughts? I, I st love the idea, uh, well, I, I, the reaction when audiences watch the film to the end and see the pictures of the real school, it's such a, a real reminder um, of, of that, you know, that it existed in there, but for the grace of you know, humanity go all of us really. And um, so I, I, you know, I want the audiences to, you know, absolutely, as Andy says, a big take home about hearts and minds and, learning from history and also young people and, and you know, with, with film up full of good, you get good and film up full of hate, you get hate. And uh, and, and then, then, then there's a sort of, you know, the audience entertainment level of it all, which is kind of, you know, a, a gripping um, rich story that kind of moves you and entertains you and thrills you and um, gives you, um, you know, a, Hopes he entertains you for the, for a good ninety minutes, and uh, so you know I just I'm a greedy boy. I want I'm greedy for everybody. I want everybody to have a good time, you know, a good take home and a good time, and enjoy a different type of story about a very real place, about a very real time in history, but hopefully entertainingly told. And, uh, and Eddie Izzard, like you've never seen Eddie Izzard before, would be great. Well, I want to propose a toast to you, Andy, and to you, Kellen, for your success with Six Minutes to Midnight. It was a wonderful film, and thank you so much for joining me. Thank you very much, Hillary. Thank you, Hillary. And British you. tea, chin, chin, chin. <laughs> Italian water, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Cheers.